Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here and it's time for part four of the Monday Q&A. So let's get to the first question. And incidentally, this first question is from a female bikini competitor to the best of my knowledge. Is it possible to increase your BMR by gradually increasing calories, reverse dieting, even if your metabolism isn't depressed? I.e. 110 pounds and 3,000 calories. Please tell me it's true, lol. Yes and no. When we're talking about BMR, you've got very limited control over that, to be honest. Yes, you do have metabolic adaptation, but I would say that from a general baseline, normal healthy person who's somewhat active, increasing or decreasing your BMR through changes in diet and activity that change hormonal functions like T4 to T3 conversion, you probably have no more than a 10 to 15% ability to increase that. So if your BMR is, is 2000, without changing dramatically your body weight or muscle mass, I'm gonna say that you're not gonna be able to shift it more than about 300 calories either direction. Now, that being said, it doesn't mean you can't gradually increase it 300 calories over time. And there's more to it than this. Now we do know that carbohydrate intake over time has the biggest effect on things like T4 to T3 conversion. So if you run a long-term low carb diet, T3 levels are gonna be lower irrespective of calories and a very high carb diet is gonna be slightly higher irrespective of total calories. So obviously any calories you add in, you want them to be carbs. Because if you're carrying the same amount of muscle mass, your protein needs, your fat needs don't really change. You're, just because your caloric needs change. So obviously you're always gonna be adding carbs. Now that being said, if you run a very, very tiny caloric surplus, you're always gonna be more energetic. You're gonna be able to train slightly harder. You're gonna be able to do more activity. You're gonna be able to induce more epoch from your training, which is like your afterburn. You're gonna be able to do more activity and train harder in general. So over time, just slowly adding carbs to your diet at a very small amount over a long period of time, you're gonna be able to increase your total TDEE more so. Your base metabolic rate might not change a whole lot, but you will get more muscle mass because of the harder training and things over time, and that muscle mass will increase BMR. So this is a viable method as long as you're continually slowly increasing workload from your training over a couple of years while eating a very, very tiny caloric surplus on a fairly high carb diet, you, so you're gonna gain more muscle, you're gonna get slightly better hormone levels like T3 levels, and you're gonna have a higher overall activity level due to the harder training. And that combined effect is gonna give you a higher caloric burn over time. So that is the best approach if you wanna just burn the most calories. Just realize that a very large portion of it is coming from your overall activity, not from your base metabolic rate. And yeah, it is possible for a 110 pound woman to get to a point to where she's burning over 3,000 calories a day due to a high athletic activity level. All right, next question. I heard that HGH is the only way one can actually increase their amount of muscle cells. Is that the reason people like Big J can maintain their freakish size that's way beyond natural limit after coming off gear? Yeah, you guys know I love the Big J example because he is an example of someone who got enormous on drugs when he was competing came off the drugs and is still able to maintain a muscle mass that no natural could have. So I love that example and I think he is a classic example of how that works because I legitimately believe him when he says that he's not been on anything for years. But is that he got so big for so long on the drugs that it changed it. Now to answer your first question, no, HGH isn't the only thing that does that. Other steroids do that over time. What they, a lot of them do, and this varies from drug to drug, they increase the nuclei content of muscle cells, and that stays even after you come off of them, but you gotta be on them for a while. But someone who's used these drugs for several years straight, yeah, they're gonna have a larger number of nucleus in their muscle cells than normal people, and we do know that nucleus content stays for years after they come off sometimes. As far as we can tell, up to 10 years, maybe longer. So that's one reason why you're able to maintain that if you've been on long enough for your body to make that permanent change. But two, a lot of them, and again, this varies from drug to drug, activate satellite cells and cause satellite cell proliferation, which does mean you're growing new muscle cells. You're not getting the hyperplasia, the cell splitting. You're getting satellite cells that are developing. So you actually are getting more muscle cells. 
the problem becomes is that when you come completely off, that satellite cell proliferation drops. You actually have to maintain a slightly superphysiological dose in order to maintain that. Again, as far as we can tell, but that's why guys blast and cruise, and that's why you'll see the biggest guys never cycle off. They just cruise to just slightly above TRT doses for half the year, and they keep all the size they gained. Rather than this three steps forward, two steps back, you see the guys are cycling. And, and that's why, but if you drop to normal physiological levels, you will not maintain that satellite cell production and your number of muscle cells will decrease over time. So it's really complicated and way more than I can really cover in the scope of a Monday Q&A. All right, next question. Since you support gear and athletics, what's your opinion on the use of Adderall and other stimulants in academia? As long as you can use it safely, I don't see the problem. We live in a very competitive world, not just sports. We live in a competitive business world, a competitive scientific world, a competitive academic world. As long as it is not compromising your health, or at least compromising it beyond what you are personally willing to accept. Because let's be honest, people who eat at McDonald's every day are compromising their health to some extent. But they're willing to accept the risk. But you do what it takes to achieve the success that you want. And if you feel that Adderall is going to give you an edge in the academic world and getting your degree or getting a better job or contributing more to society as a result of what you achieve, then I can't personally fault someone for doing that. That's their own business. They did what they have to do. I don't personally have an issue with it. My only concern would be to those people is that do research on it and make sure that what you're doing isn't going to harm your health. That would be the number one concern. Is it harmful? As far as the cheating thing goes, we live in a competitive world. And as they say, all is fair in love and war. And business, academics, and sports today are war. And to the victor goes the spoils. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time in part five.